Thank you for watching this DS Systems tutorial. In this video, we'll look at assembly finished goods. The assemblies form part of the production functionality in Deere Infantry and keep track of the use of raw materials and associated costs throughout the manufacturing process. In this video, I'm going to assume you're familiar with the process of creating products in Deere, and if not, I'd recommend watching our product management video before continuing. Before you can create assembly finished goods, you must first create products that have a bill of materials. Let's take a look at how to do that. Navigate to the Inventory module and create a new product. Fill in all mandatory fields as normal. If you wish to manufacture items that have a serial number, batch number or expiry date, you'll need to choose the appropriate costing method. The costing methods are further explored in another video. Add the unit of measure for the product and then choose Assembly Bill Materials in the drop-down. Choosing the Assembly BOM from the Bill of Materials drop-down field will open up the Bill of Materials tab in the left navigation panel. The Bill of Materials tab lets you add component products and any labour or overheads associated with the manufacturing process. If Auto Assembly or Kit is checked, whenever a sales order involving this product is authorised, the component products will automatically be taken out of your inventory. If there's sufficient stock, the product will be assembled automatically and be available for fulfilment. However, if there is insufficient component stock, the quantity of finished good items will not increase until the assembly has been authorised. Auto Disassembly refers to the functionality that allows you to automatically disassemble finished goods into their component products. This functionality is explored in another video. The potential cost of manufacturing can be estimated using average cost, latest purchase cost, or fixed purchase cost. Note that at the time of manufacturing the finished product, the combined actual cost of the raw materials and labour will be used to produce the final finished product's cost. The component products and services of a finished good must be created before you can add them to the bill of materials. These can be created just like any other products or services. Add component products to your bill of materials by selecting the product fields. You'll then need to identify a quantity. And if your component items are wasted during manufacturing, you need to enter a wastage percentage or a wastage quantity here. These two values are mutually exclusive. Disassembly cost percentage enables you to select a percentage of the finished goods value the component is comprised of. This enables disassembly to divide the finished goods value based on the percentage you've set. Note that if disassembly cost percentage is left blank, Deere splits the cost of the components equally between product lines. Enter the assembly finished goods quantity that your bill of materials will produce. The default option is 1 and will be entered automatically. You can also assign labour and overheads to the bill of materials that are involved in the manufacturing process. As with component products, the service items for labour and overheads must be created beforehand. Select your overhead items, include a quantity, a price tier, and choose the expense account the overhead cost will be assigned to. Then, save your product. Saving the product will make it available for the assembly module and allow you to begin producing the finished good. To start manufacturing, you'll need to navigate to the Productions module and select New Assembly. On the New Assembly screen, you need to choose a location. This will be the location where the finished good will be located, but also the location where the component products are to be picked from. You can only manufacture your finished goods if there's sufficient component products at your selected location. You'll then need to choose the product you wish to manufacture. You have the option of including a work in progress account and a finished goods account for the manufacturing run. This enables you to more accurately track the value of your components in your balance sheet while the assembly is taking place. Enter the quantity of the products that you wish to produce. And here, you have the option to calculate the maximum quantity of finished goods that can be manufactured with the current quantity of component products available. You can then move to the assembly order tab and begin populating your assembly order. Click load bomb which will load all items from the bill of materials that are required to manufacture the finished good. The assembly order can also be amended at this stage by adding more items or changing the quantities. Product quantities shown in red indicate there is not sufficient stock at the location to complete the order. These will need to be ordered before the assembly order can be completed. Though, the assembly order can still be authorised at this stage, however, a new back order will be created for the missing products. To find out more about processing back orders, watch our video on split orders and back orders. 
we're going to proceed with all components in stock. In the assembly order, you can now see that the red showing the insufficient quantities has been removed. You can now proceed to the pick stage. Select Auto Pick to fill in the list with all components from your assembly order and make any final changes to the total quantity required for the assembly order. You can then click Allocate to take all of the component products out of your inventory. Once you've completed the assembly, you can amend the quantity here if the actual yield was higher or lower than expected. And select Complete to finish the manufacturing run. Completing the assembly task will increase the number of finished goods by the actual yield. And that concludes this video on assemblies.